Everybody loves to talk about the flashy hooks like use state and use effect, but the other hooks are still incredibly useful. And today I want to talk about use debug value. This is a very simple and easy to understand hook that makes working with and writing custom hooks a lot easier. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about the use debug value hook. Now to get started, I have probably the most basic application you can build. I just have two pieces of state. One of them is using this custom use local storage hook. The other one is just the standard use state hook. And then I have two inputs down here to modify them so I can change these two values. And you can see they update just fine. The only big difference between the two is when I refresh my page, you can see the first name, which is using this custom use local storage hook, is being persisted because it's stored in my local storage. Now, if we were to inspect this page real quick using our developer tools, and if you have the React DevTools extension downloaded for your browser, you should see a tab here called Components. When you click on that, you can see all your components. Ours just has one component called App. And then when you open that up inside of it, you can see all the different hooks, state, and so on inside of your application in this Hooks tab right here. You can see we have a custom hook called local storage, and we also have a state hook, which is using the state of cook. So as you can see, our state hook has this nice little you know, value next to it, this cook value saying this is what's inside of our state. But our local storage doesn't have that. We have to open up the local storage, and then we say, okay, here's our state hook that's inside of there. It's doing this. We also have a use effect and use callback hook. So it's a little bit harder to debug this local storage hook because on the you know, face value, it doesn't have a value next to it. And when we expand it, we can find the value, but if the hook is more complicated, it has lots of state and effects and so on, it may be hard to know what the important information from this hook is. So the use debug value hook essentially gives you a way to write something next to your hook. And that's something that you can write, can be like state values or anything you want to just make it easier to know what's going on inside your hook for when you are debugging it. To show you what I'm talking about, we're just gonna go into that use local storage hook. I've just got all of the code here collapsed because it really doesn't matter about the implementation of this hook. If you're really curious about how I created this, I have a full video on it. It's in my free React hooks course. It's linked down in the description below. It covers all the hooks as well as about 30 different custom hooks. Now, continuing on from that, we just need to enter use debug value, import that from React to the top, and we just paste in whatever value we want to show up next to our hook. In our case, we're just going to put this value variable because that's the value of our local storage state. So now if we save that, we go back over to inspect and we go to that components tab again. If I click on our app, you can see if we go down to hooks here that we have that hook local storage and it says Kyle ASDF ASDF right next to it. And that's because that's the actual value. And if we change this value, you can see over here, it's updating that value perfectly in our use debug value hook. Now this right here is by far the most basic way you can use the debug value hook. And it's probably the most common way you're going to use it. So as you can see, it's a fairly simple hook, but there's a few extra nuances about this hook that can make it even better to work with. Now the first thing you do need to understand about this hook though, is it only works inside of custom hooks. If I put this use debug value inside of our app JS, let me just move this over here real quick. Make sure that we import that library and we'll just change this to like first name. If I do that and save, and I go over and inspect our page, and I go to that components tab, you're going to notice, even when I click on my app, nowhere does it actually say that first name property. I don't see it anywhere. And that's because it only shows up as a label next to custom hooks. So it's important to understand that this is only for custom hooks and nothing else. Let's bring that back in. Now let's say that we wanted to log out multiple values. So you had multiple use debug values. Let's say we wanted to do our key and our value like this. Well, this is actually allowed inside of React, and you can see it's going to convert this essentially to an array. So if we go over to our application here, I'm sorry, not application, our components, click on this, you can see local storage now has an array which has the key, which is first name, and the value, which is like Kyle, blah, blah, blah. And if we expand local storage, you can see we also get this debug value hook right here, which we can expand to see all the different values in the array. So you can see everything that is being logged out for that use debug value. And again, this is the exact same thing as if I had just used an array here of key value. If you use your debug value hook twice, it essentially just converts them into an array. If we go and inspect this page again, look at the components tab, you can see it gives us the exact same result as we had before. And this is really nice because you can also, you know, debug more complex things than just a single value. For example, we could do like an object that has our key and our value inside of it. And let's say that we wanted to also log out something else like high. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. So we're logging out high and we're also logging out an object. Now, if I go to my inspect here, Go over to that components tab again, click on this, you can see that local storage hook has both the high as well as our object, and we can expand this to get down to all the different details of our object. 
so you can make it as complex or nested as you need to. It's really nice that it has all this functionality built in and you can kind of just see the value right here. So that's what's really nice about it. You can put like a really simple version of the value right here and then you can kind of get more into the nitty gritty by expanding everything down here. Now, the final thing I want to cover about this hook has to do with performance because as you know, this use debug value hook is in your code. So when you push your code to production, it's actually going to be running everything in your use debug value. So let's say the actual value you're printing out is really slow to calculate. For example, I'm just going to copy over this function. All this function does right here is it just loops through a loop a bunch of times, essentially just emulating something that's really slow to perform and just returns the same value we pass it. So let's say when we do our use debug value, we're just putting our value into here, but it takes a really long time to calculate our value. Well, our application is going to be really kind of laggy to work with. So I'm just going to like put this back to Kyle how it was before, save this. And now I'm going to come over here and already it's really unresponsive. Like I clicked inside of here. It's not working at all. It's not doing anything. There we go. Finally highlighted. And I'm going to start typing right now. I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing. And eventually that text is going to show up on my screen, but it's super delayed. And that's because every single time our component re-renders, it calls this use local storage hook and it has to go into this use debug value down here. And it's doing this massive for loop over and over and over and over and over again, every single time that we change our state. So as you can see, our value finally showed up, but it was incredibly slow. And this is not a good user experience. Obviously in the real world, it's probably not going to be this slow, but this is a great example. So this is why the use debug value hook actually takes two values that you pass to it. Normally you can pass it one value and it just prints that value out. But if you want, you can pass it two values. The first value is just an argument for a function. And the second value is a function that takes in that argument. So for example, we're going to be passing this value value to our function as this V keyword. And then we're going to call that get value slowly and pass in V. So by using the function version here, you're essentially telling React, you know what, only run this function if I'm A, in development, and B, I have the developer tools open to be able to see what the result is. Otherwise, don't run this function at all. So if you have slow code like I'm talking about, this is going to prevent it from running when you're in production or not even needing the value. So let's just save that real quick, come over here, and already you can see it's completely responsive. Every time I type, the text is changing exactly as I expect. But the only time it's going to call this function is when I go into my developer tools and I go over to that components tab, open this up, and now you can see it's saying loading because this is the very first time it's calling that function. And it's now trying to calculate all the values. And as you can see, it's timed out here because this function's too slow. But if the function was a little bit quicker, like I just remove a couple zeros here, and now we come over to our application, just give it a click refresh real quick, click on app. Now you can see it loaded up just fine because it was a little bit quicker. But still, this kind of gets my point across. The only time that this function right here is going to be called is as soon as you try to access the value in the developer tools. So this is really great if you're dealing with slower calculations for your debug values. And that's all there is to this simple hook. Now, if you want to take your React skills to the next level and learn about all the possible hooks there are, you're going to want to check out my completely free React Hooks course. It's linked down in the description below. It covers every single React hook you need to know, as well as a bunch of different custom hooks. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.